What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing fine tuning with the ChatGPT API. Now for the example, I want to do with this fine tuning is going to be generating YouTube chapter sections, given a transcript, right? So imagine you have a YouTube video, like I'm showing you guys here, and uh, you have a transcript of that video, right? Like here on the right, like you can copy from here on the YouTube page, on the YouTube page. So uh, this is an example of a chapter section, and I would like to do fine tuning with the ChatGPT API to generate this chapter section reliably, um, directed from that transcript, right? Because essentially, when you're you know doing YouTube, you can upload a video, you get the transcript, right? And you can also you know there are a bunch of tools. Uh, there's one that's very cool. It's called OpenAI Whisper with Timestep that I also like to use. But essentially, you can get the transcript with the timestamps. And I would like to transform that into a chapter section automatically. Usually I feed that into GPT, GPT-4, but I want to do this programmatically. So let's see how to do that. And let's see how to do that with fine tuning. Now, fine tuning with the GPT guy is essentially quite simple. All we need to do is prepare some data, train the fine tuning model, and then use it for inference. That's simple. Okay. So the only thing is that we have to know what the data has to look like. Right, the data has to be formatted in a certain way for the model to accept it and then be able to train on. It. And in this case, we're going to be using a data set. The data set for fine tuning the chat API has to be a JSON L file, like the one I'm showing here on the right, which essentially is going to be a compilation of JSON files. Now, JSON L files are really interesting. They're like a type of a uh, file that's to facilitate creating data sets from JSON files, because you can combine them all into just one file and that's it, right? So what is the structure that this data set has to have, right? So the structure, like I'm showing here on the left, and I took this example from the OpenAI fine tuning documentation, is essentially you're gonna have a bunch of lists. Each list is gonna have this messages key and this message key is going to be associated with a list containing three dictionaries, right? And this is essentially uh, looks very similar to what we are already used to in the ChatGPT API, which is that uh, you have a list with three key, with three dictionaries. One describing the role of the system, like in this case, from the open documentation. Marv is a chatbot that's also sarcastic, right? This describes what the overall system has to behave like. And then the user content and user content is the prompt from the user to right to the model. In this case, uh, the question is like, what's the gap to friends, whatever. And then the assistant content, which is the last, uh, dictionary in that messages list is going to be the output from the model that we expect. In this case, it's saying Paris, but then it's giving us an arc remark, like as if everyone doesn't know that already, whatever. Uh, and then you create just a bunch of these dictionaries and that's your data set. And according to the OpenAI documentation, and I'm quoting from them right here, uh, you can uh, expect like better performance uh, from fine tuning on 50 to 120 examples, but the minimum is 10 examples. So we can start from like 10, 15 examples. And then if we see that we need it, we can increase the size of the data set upon necessity. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. So to do that, what are we going to do? We're going to start with a set of URLs for a bunch of my YouTube videos, right? So if I click in one of these links, it will direct me to one of my videos. This is one of my latest videos from a month ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that inside a list, right? Like I'm doing here. And I am going to, the first thing that I'm going to do actually that I already did. So I'm going to show you guys here is get the transcripts for these URLs. So if I go here, this is one example of a transcript for, um, for a URL for a YouTube view that I did. And I can show you guys here that if I do this, you can see all the transcript files that I have here, right? So I have a bunch of transcripts from YouTube videos. Now I'm going to def define a few helper functions to help you with some initial stuff. And essentially here I'm defining the get number of tokens function which essentially tells you how many tokens there are on a string for a specific model. In this case, I'm doing for the GPT 2.5 Turbo because that's the model we're going to be using for fine tuning. This is a get response function. This is a classic um, function I use when I want to call the ChatGPT API. 
and a load transcription function, which is a function to load these transcription files that you see here, uh, for example, here on my right. Now, here I'm just showing you guys the same example here on the right. I'm just showing you here on the notebook because I, I think it's helpful to have it all in just one Jupyter notebook. And now what I can do is do a first check that these transcription files have a token size that's under the context length of the model. And I want to do that because I want to avoid having to chunk and having to do any kind of like a truncation, uh, having truncated out inputs, et cetera, stuff like that. Something that we'll see the OpenAI documentation already provides a bunch of awesome validation, uh, let's say a validation checklist with Python code associated. And we'll see that in a bit. However, I wanted to do that myself. So here we have it each transcription file and the token size for each of those files. And I was smart about this. So I only picked videos that were under 10 minutes because that meant that the context length was going to be below 4,096 tokens, which is the maximum I can do for this model specifically. So that's great. So at this point, I mean, I have the timestamp transcriptions and now what we're going to do is we're going to get the transcriptions. We're going to get the chapter sections, and then we're going to craft the prompt that would be um, good and reliable to generate that chapter section. So here I'm getting the chapter files and the transcription files. As you can see, we have 11 chapter sections that, was, that were generated in 11 transcription files. I can come here and show you the chapter section for this transcription. So this is the chapter section associated. That's great. And now what we can do is we're going to create a list and this list, I'm just going to organize all the data that we have. In this case, we have URLs, we have transcriptions and we have a chapter section. So I'm going to put it all into a list and each entry on that list, each element in that list or item in that list is going to be a dictionary containing the URL, the transcription and the chapter section, right? So that's what I'm generating here, as you guys can see from this little snippet of code. And that's awesome. Great. So we have that organized and we want to have that organized because now we're going to follow to create the JSONL file, right? So to do that, we have to set up a few things that we need, right? We talked about what we need for the JSONL file, right? We can go back here. We need a system prompt. And that we're going to need this list of messages, right? In each inside a dictionary in the messages key, the value is going to be a list containing three dictionaries. One is the system prompt, user prompt, and the assistant prompt. So for the system prompt, if I go back down here, for the system prompt, we're going to have your helpful assist, right? Because I have zero creativity at the moment. And for the user prompt, we're always going to say, in I'm not sure that it's a good idea to just to set a fixed phrase on the fine tuning. I don't know what would be the effect of that in the model if I did this for like, let's say hundreds of examples or even thousands of examples, right? So, but for a small data set, I don't think that it's going to bias the model or make it overfit to, you know, the specific phrase that I'm using, but I'm saying, give this YouTube video transcript. Given this transcript, I want you to create a chapter section for this YouTube video with the following format. And then I give the format, which is just going to be like, have an icon, chapters, um, column, and then next, the next line. And then I give an example of what a chapter section might look like. And I just give it a few examples and then that's it. All right. And then the output will always be corresponding chapter section for the particular. Great. So now we're going to generate a new JSON structure, right? Like um, a list of dictionaries, but now containing the stuff that we need to train the model, right? So that's what this function here is doing. And we can take a look at what that looks like right here on my right, because I generated this file from this slip of code. So if I run this, I get this that you guys can see here. And that's great. We have everything organized as desired to be able to train the model. That's perfect. Now, before we go into the fine tuning part, we're going to do a few checks that actually I took from this wonderful blog post from the cookbook from OpenAI. It kind of shows you a little bit of like a few things to check before you do your fine tuning to make sure that you're good to go. 
And one of which being like, they do first a little check of how many examples you have and then show an example. And then you, you we're going to go through some validation checklists that checks for a bunch of things that are important uh, to see if your data set is formatted properly. And you can check out the blog post. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this link for the cookbook where you can see each of these components. But we're checking for a bunch of things like uh, if we were doing message calls, like if role not in messenger content. So we're seeing if the correct keys are inside that data set, et cetera. So, and then in the end, you know, if there are no errors found, we'll print no errors found, like you're seeing here. So there are no errors in this data set that I generated. Now, wonderful. Now, what we do next is we set up, and again, these ones I took from the block notes from the cookbook, which are functions to uh, estimate some statistics on your data set and calculate the cost and the token estimation for your fine tuning job. Right? So we define those, and then when we run them, we get something that looks like this, saying, okay, so how many examples don't have a system message? As you can see, none of my examples don't have a system message, and none of my examples don't have a user message, so everything's good there. And then a distribution of the number of messages for, per example, so it's just always 3-3, three, three, so that's great. Distribution of number of total tokens, for example, and a distribution of the number of system tokens, for example. That's great. But we want to get to here. This is where we calculate the uh, estimation of tokens for your fine tuning job. And this is the thing that's a bit like that we have to be very careful about, right? Because we have to know how many epochs we're going to train our model for, right? And based on a minimum and maximum amount of epochs and the token size of your current state of your data set. When you multiply that by each epoch, that's going to be your cost. That's going to be your full token size. And we can estimate the cost based on your entire token size. When we multiply the total amount of tokens in your data set by the amount of epochs you're going to train your model for. So when we run this, we get something that looks like this. And there we go. So you, by default, you'll be charged for 222,507 tokens. We're going to trade for nine epochs and that's it. So I can take this number of tokens, right? And uh, that are stored in the total tokens variable. I can go to the pricing page in OpenAI. Okay. I can see that for fine tuning, for training, the price is 0 0.008 per thousand tokens. So I can write a little function that says calculate cost for fine tuning. I can give the token count. I can give that number for the um, um, uh, amount per thousand tokens. I'll divide all of that by a thousand because we're giving the actual total token count. And $1.78 is the price for my fine tuning. Now, that might seem reasonable. That might not seem reasonable. I'm not going to do any kind of judgment on, you know, whether or not this is expensive or not, because we also have to take into consideration the fact that we're going to be paying for the requests and the pay, the payment for requests on a fine tuning uh, model, it's different than your general inference request, uh, inference price on the ChatGPT model, right? So it's uh, you have to account for those things when you're creating your fine tuning. If you're doing this as a product for someone, or if you're doing this just for yourself, you have to take that into consideration, right? However, in this case, now we are finally ready to create our fine tuning job. So. Like we said before, for fine tuning, we need three steps, right? Create our data set. That's what we've done so far. Uh, we're going to fine tune the model, so train it for some amount of epochs, and then we're going to use it. So here, we're going to call openai.file.create. We're going to feed in the data set that we have, and we're going to say purpose, fine tune, and that will generate this object, which will have an ID that indicates, right? So this data set is over here. Okay. So we can list that and we can find that all with other you know, potential data sets that we might have there. And what we can do then is I can access that file ID with uh, this line, which is just saying openai.file. We list all the files that we have. We access the data object 
and we say uh, we get the first element in the list in this case because it's where my file ID would be located and I get the ID, right? So I can see that to a fine tuning job, which I'll create by calling openai.fine-tuning-job.create and boom, we, get, uh, we created our fine tuning job. That fine tuning job will be associated with a fine tuning job ID. And that's important because uh, we're going to use that later. Okay. So now, for example, now that we created that fine tuning job, we have to wait for the fine tuning to finish so that we can use our model. Right. And if you want to check in on the status of our fine tuning job, we can say fine tuning job dot retrieve. We give that ID, and once our model is finished, it's going to say under the status key, the value is going to be succeeded. If it's not finished, it's going to say running, right? But in this case, I mean, I already did this example so that you guys wouldn't have to be waiting here for the thing to, to be done. Um, after that, you're going to also get an email from an OPI saying your fine tuning job has successfully completed in a new model, totally playground like I'm showing on the screenshot. And then I'm feeding here a YouTube video transcript, and then I'm getting the chapter section like you guys are seeing here. But we can also uh, do that programmatically, right? Which is preferable. So to run an inference with our fine tuned model, we would, you know, I prepared a prompt here with this huge transcript. Don't necessarily recommend doing a fine tuning job with this amount of text, but this was just for demonstration purposes. And then we can call the openai.chatcompletion.create method, we can give, instead of the model being GPT 3.5 Turbo, we're going to give that fine tuning job ID and we say, okay, so print the completion. And as you guys can see here on the bottom, I got my chapter section with the timestamps, everything perfectly, just like I wanted. And that's pretty much it. That's how you do fine tuning with the chat API. This is actually something that uh, I want to explore a little bit more ways in which we can use the chat and uh, this fine tuning ability to get structure format, to set tones for certain things and to see where it can be useful. Uh, nevertheless, uh, at least now we have an idea on how to do it, the basics, the fundamentals, and this is how you can do it. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time. Cheers.